Hey, what's up? It's Chris Alicia, aka Chris, and welcome to my channel. Um, today we are doing a book review of Wash Day Diaries um, and a bit of some hair care. So today you are actually seeing like day five hair. I forgot to record an intro when I initially recorded the video. So without further ado, let's hop on in. <laughs> So today we're doing a little bit of a book review and you might be asking yourself bro why are you in a bathroom great question so today i'm going to be reading wash day diaries by jamila rouser with the art by robin smith this book came up on my instagram and i saw it and immediately was like I need to request this for multiple reasons. One, I'm really into manga. I love anime, I love manga, I read a lot of shonen. I literally have my shonen jump subscription, which I live by, but it's rare for me to read graphic novels outside of the manga sphere. I've been kind of dabbling a little bit more this year. I read Magic Fish recently, phenomenal story. Last year I read a couple and they didn't spark my interest as much. I didn't like them as much as I thought I would. So I saw this, saw the story behind it and immediately was like, yep, I'm gonna go request that on that galley immediately. So that's exactly what I did. So I thought that since I'm reading this book about four best friends and their hair love, their hair care journeys, their hair care in general, I should probably practice the same for myself. So if you don't know me in real personal life, this is what my hair used to look like. It was a process to even get it to look like this. And then once the pandemic hit, you know, identity crises started. So decided might not go for something a little bit different and ended up cutting it to this, dyeing it a little bit, and then realized my hair is fried because of this bleach. Let's just do something new that we've been wanting to do for a while and chop it all off. So looked really great when we first did it. And then I realized I want my hair back. So this is what we're currently working with. This part is growing out more. This I can at least put into a nice little bun and ponytail now, but this is, this is not where I want it to be, you know? So I initially cut my hair off because I was tired of having to deal with it. Once 2020 hit, I kind of stopped taking care of my hair because I wasn't leaving the house. So it was always like tied up in a bun. It was always getting really knotted because I wasn't taking care of myself. So I definitely wasn't taking care of my hair. So what we're doing today is trying to get me back into doing the hair care routines I used to do. I want my hair to feel healthy. I want my hair to grow longer. I want my curls to, to flourish and feel better like they did before. So that's what we're doing today. So the first thing we're actually gonna do is put some oils in my hair to just help with different things. Um, so I have my little applicator here. Got this shirt and Sally's for like a dollar. Um, just makes it easier for application. Have some almond oil here, which helps soften my hair. I have pretty thin, pretty dry hair, so it can get really brittle sometimes, um, especially, like I said, I'm not taking care of it as much as I should be. I used to dye it a lot. I used to bleach a lot, so that'll just help with the texture. I also have some grapeseed oil, which is good for hair growth, moisturizing, um, strengthening, and adding some shine to my hair. And then last but not least, we have coconut oil. I use coconut oil for everything, literally everything, and you can thank my husband for that. But specifically, what this will help do is help moisturize the scalp and kind of seal in the hair follicles and that'll help with like scalp dryness um, and stop dandruff and like itchy scalps and everything which if you're not taking care of your hair in the best way that can happen so what we're gonna do is just put it in to this bottle um you can see that there's already an ounce here i had this from before haven't used it in a while there's been there's some other oils in there like olive oil jojoba oil a couple other things i can't remember to be honest so sorry about that so i'm just gonna pour this in to like oh it's one ounce let's do the math like two ounces each and kind of just mix it all together after that and then just just a quick disclaimer i know nothing about hair like literally nothing. So please don't use this as a hair tutorial because 
I'm not a good source for that. This is going to be about books and book reviews and probably like manga and anime. And as you can see, none of those things are here. This isn't great for beauty content. I'm not your girl for that. So sorry if that's what you were expecting. But while I'm doing this, I just want to talk a little bit more about hair wash diaries. So one thing I found out about while doing some research is that the author, Jamila Rouser, is also the founder of a press company called Black Jose Press, which is specifically a comics press company that creates stories for and by women of color and non-binary people of color, which I find amazing. As you can assume, the comic industry is pretty male heavy. I also love that they are pretty upfront about their manga inspiration. I love reading manga. I started reading manga probably a couple years ago, but I've been watching anime since I was a child. And honestly, most of you probably have too, because if you watch Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh or Beyblades or Sailor Moon, or anything on Adult Swim or Toonami after a certain point, you are watching anime. And even if you didn't know it as a child, this is me filling you in. So as someone that loves that kind of art and content, it was super excited to see this because that means it exists. And after reading this, I'll have more to consume, which is even better because just looking at their website and their Instagram prior to recording this, I saw that they have another comic being released in the fall called Gordita by Daisy Ruiz, which I'm super excited for, as you can tell. I'm a bigger girl. I always have been, and I think that's something that I struggled with a lot. I have never been super comfortable in front of a camera. My husband is a photographer, videographer, and that helped me a lot. But again, as a pandemic started, body changes, life changes, that kind of stopped for me. I lost that confidence, so trying to build that up again through this. So stay tuned. But I also think that ties in really, really well to the story itself of Wash Hair Diaries, which is a love letter to Black women and their experience and their beauty and their endurance as it relates to their lives, their friendships, and it's all told in basically short stories that relate to their hair. So this graphic novel specifically has five chapters and each of the chapters follows one of four best friends the ups and downs of their lives living in the Bronx. And each short story uses hair routines as a, basically a window into each of these people's lives and seeing how they interact with each other, how they intertwine with each other, and how basically they take care of each other. So after reading that, I was like, yep, I'm hooked. So some of my favorite things um, when I'm reading are seeing strong friendships develop. I think once you pass a certain age, that's usually not a strong focus in books anymore. So I love seeing that as we enter like a new adult genre those friendships specifically between women specifically between women of color and black women are being brought to the forefront again just because again it's one of my favorite things to read i don't really like romance if it's a subplot i can get into it but that's just not for me i also do prioritize reading books by women of color just because as a woman of color that's not what i had growing up i read a lot of what was popular and what was popular back then were books about people that didn't look like me books about people that didn't look like my family or my friends um, so that's something that since i got back into reading a couple years ago i prioritized over everything else so I really stopped delving into what was popular and more into what do I want to see? What are the books about lives that I want to read about and not just what's being put in front of me, which is a whole other issue with the publishing industry. We're not going to get into that today. So before I give you my thoughts on the first chapter, because I already read that, we're going to go ahead and start putting some of this oil in my hair. Um, so it rained yesterday and my hair is still wet. This is what she looks like in her natural state, you know. We got a lot to, to work with. It's at this really awkward length now where the under part is like growing, but it's still not long enough to do anything with. And then this was cut in a shorter style that you saw before. So this isn't even, even really, but we're not gonna talk about that. So we are gonna go ahead by, by just putting some of this oil in. So I just took my hair down. Maybe not the best idea, who knows? We'll see how this goes. So this is mainly going to be focused on my scalp and then it'll just kind of naturally go and spread as it sits just because my hair is also not very long. So it's going to do that. 
And again, I am not a professional. This is not professional experience. This is what I'm doing. Please do not take any of this as advice for what you should do with your hair. So I'm actually gonna go ahead, do a little half up, half down moment so that I can start putting the oil towards the bottom parts of my hair. But yes, so the book itself, I read chapter one and immediately adored it. The art is gorgeous. It's a full color graphic novel, which is very different than manga, but I think is more common in like American graphic novels. But again, as someone who mainly reads manga, if I'm reading graphic novels, it was a really pleasant surprise. <laughs> the colors are gorgeous. Um, definitely helps you get sucked into the story right away. Um, in the first chapter, we follow Kim and she's basically waking up, starting her day with the first part of her wash day routine. And the first thing I noticed that I really enjoyed was real bodies which is something I always appreciate seeing. I'm not shying away from, you know, what real average bodies look like. Seeing what real bodies look like instead of just going to like an automatically thin person just because it's gonna be more palatable. But I also think, you know your audience, you're writing a book for your audience, not for anyone outside of your audience, if that makes sense. So, you know, the girl got some thickness to her. Um, she has some curves, which is great to see in media. So that was the first thing that stuck out to me. The next thing that I really loved, this is not a spoiler, I'm gonna try my best not to give spoilers, I'm just trying to do some overarching things, but they had um, a coco helado cart, and if you're from New York you know exactly what I'm talking about. I have not been to New York in the summer in literal years, so I have not been able to go to the coco cart in forever, but even seeing on the side the detail that it said cherry, mango, coconut, I'm like yes, 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 yes i want that if you don't know what i'm talking about this is what it looks like delicious if you're ever in new york in the summer go get you some you will not regret it my personal favorite is half mango half cherry 100 delicious you should do it but yes back to the story like even just little glimpses into the day-to-day -day life of black women and how people interact with them is just so interesting because again, like I've seen this happen. I'm not naive, like just seeing how the world interacts around black women um, and seeing that in media kind of talks on cat call culture and kind of both sides of that, the positive and the, the real disrespectful once you don't acknowledge it. But I think the last thing that the way the chapter just kind of ended out and it was just like this person going about their lives and saying, today is for me. Today is only going to be for me and I'm not going to let, you know, any other distractions kind of take away from this time with myself, this intimate time with myself that I deserve. And I don't know, that part was beautiful. You get to see some different just culture in general between the friends, which is like a really fun like nod to it. So yeah, I'm definitely excited to read the next chapter, but I have the oil in my hair. I'm going to let this sit for 30 minutes to an hour. Before I wash it out, I am gonna massage it a little bit for like five minutes to just make sure that it really gets into the hair follicles. But while I'm doing that, I'm actually gonna read the next two chapters. So I will see you then. Hello, we're back. I have moisturized my hair, so I'm gonna quickly just massage it in a little bit more um, just to make sure that it is fully in there. Um, so I read chapter two and three. Both were really, really good. The first chapter two was called Group Chat. Really liked it. It continues to explore the best friends friend dynamic through Group Chat and kind of like that relatable experience of people hyping each other up. All around good vibes. You get to see a little bit more of everyone's personality, which is really cool. But this chapter follows Nisha and she's going to the hair salon to get her hair braided. But I really love this chapter. Like it's funny. There's a part I literally laughed out loud at. It also gave me this art, which honestly so relatable. Love this type of stuff in graphic novels. It was also just really sex positive, which I appreciate. Again, not gonna delve too deep in because I don't wanna give any spoilers, but I really, really did like it. Bright side and it follows Davine. This one gets a little bit darker. So we're exploring um, mental health. We're exploring depression and kind of that impact on your lift space and how um, you kind of function 
and go through that. This one is interesting because you see um, her and Cookie's relationship in person and I think it says a lot about how you speak to your friends, how often what you give through like phone communication isn't the same thing you would give in an in-person conversation um, just because you get that face-to-face -face time and you have a better understanding. It's harder to lie basically face-to-face. -face. This one is interesting because I think it has a lot of commentary on how mental health and specifically like how poor mental health, how depression, how anxiety, how those things are viewed in communities of color. You get these comments from Cookie saying like, oh, on the bright side, this, or like, it's not that bad, it's gonna get better, don't worry. And when Zabinian talks about like, I'm seeing a therapist, maybe I should get on antidepressants, you see Cookie like, nah, don't do that, that's bad for you. Like, think about what it would do to your body. And it's just like, the ways people speak about antidepressants and things that like will help your mental state is very different than how people talk about medications that would help your physical body. And it's, it's interesting because you can see it in that. I really appreciated this. This is just bringing more conversation to light about how stigmatized mental health is and um, kind of bettering your mental health and things that can help your mental health, how they kind of still are stigmatized in these communities and in our communities in general. So really, really liked this. You have this moment in both of these chapters where in chapter two, Nisha is getting her hair braided and you get this beautiful, gorgeous art of the actual process of like the dividing the hair of her hair being blown out and washed and the braids coming together and it's gorgeous like again i mentioned this before you don't see this type of stuff in media so seeing something not detailed in media is just beautiful to see and then in chapter three cookie came over to cornrow Devonay's hair so again getting these intimate moments between friends in this process beautiful thing to see but my hair has been sufficiently massaged the oils are sufficiently in there so i'm gonna go ahead and wash my hair i will be using rizzo's curls products so they're hydrating shampoo and their deep conditioner like i mentioned before i'm not a beauty person that is not my forte that's not what i want to do this is about books and book reviews but i like these products because a lot of the curly hair products i've used or that i see reviews for are usually a little bit heavier than my hair can take all curls are not the same so each person's curls kind of need something different so I need something that's a little bit lighter because my hair is a little bit thinner so if I have something too heavy it's gonna kind of bring it down which isn't what I really want right now so I've been having a really good experience this hair brand it is Latina owned which is great because having fit people but yeah I'm gonna go ahead wash my hair and I'll see you in a bit hello I'm back my hair is washed I don't like to put a ton of products in my hair just use a little bit of the curl defining cream um, put that in when I was still in the shower and then I'm going to diffuse until it's dry. So, chapters four and five. Um, chapter four, La Bendición, was focused on cookie. And this one touched on some family dynamics. I think it's interesting because it kind of tells on this conversation of, do you need to actually forgive people that have harmed you or have caused harm to you in some way? It explores the relationship between her and one of her grandmothers. And they end up having this really deep, intimate conversation while... She's visiting her grandmother and doing her hair. They don't have a great relationship going into this. So kind of just talking through what caused the rift between them. And I'm going to leave it at that. This wraps up the four of the individual stories. And then the last chapter um, is called Rider Dies. And again, explores the friendship dynamic. Um, you get some in-person moments with all of them and you get a glimpse into their personalities. Like you have this moment where Kim and Cookie are at home and Cookie is talking about how their friends aren't there yet. And Kim's like, don't even stress it. I told everyone 8.30, but I knew we weren't get there on time. It actually starts at 10. And I love those little moments because it shows the personalities more and it really shows like how real friendships work. I really like this chapter because you get to see them in different settings. So you see them in their apartment, you see them out on like the subway and how they interact with each other. And when they're together, how they're in their own world and you can see the love, you can feel the love and the support. And it's honestly super dope to see. I also appreciate this chapter because it shows the different ways in which a strong group of friends fiercely protect each other, quite literally. And then, you know, protecting their peace emotionally. Um, you get this moment with Cookie and Divine where Cookie's like, are you ready to go? Like, I know it's been a long day. Let's just leave. You can see the relief in Divine's face that she's just like, yep, let's go. I'm done with this. It's been a long night. 
as an introvert, I relate, I relate, I relate, I relate, I get it. So I love seeing that moment. And then it caps off with them having like this, this group sleepover. And it wraps up with them just all being together in their most comfortable states, getting ready to go to sleep and just love it, love it. But that is chapter five. So I'm gonna diffuse my hair. I was gonna say quickly, it's not quick, it's a process. But as soon as I'm done, I'll give you my final thoughts. And yeah, see you in a bit. Mm. Well, I don't need a lot of wishes cause I'll be okay if I get one. Hello. So this is the final look. How are we feeling? I'm not good at this, but it's better than what it looked like before, I have to say. And truly, I think that is irrefutable. So final thoughts. What do we think? I loved it. That's not surprising if you've heard anything I've talked about, um, but I absolutely love it. I love the way it explores friendship dynamics, family dynamics, relationship dynamics, all of the above. The art and the hair representation in this is gorgeous. I think it just captures Black woman joy so well. And I think that's something that we need more of in this world. I loved the art. I love the colors that were used. I just love everything about this. I would, without a doubt, rate this a five out of five. 10 out of 10 would recommend, it's funny that I just said five out of five, but a 10 out of 10 recommendation. Yeah, 100% recommend you go out, buy this. Um, it is available July 5th. So please, 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 if this is something that you think you'd be interested in, I will link it down below so you can go ahead and pre-order it. I will also link Black Jose Press so you can see the other things that they have coming out that are already published and coming out in the fall as well. Yep, that's it. So that was my review of Wash Day Diaries while also washing my hair and giving it the love it deserves because that is what these women taught me. Hair is an important part of you and just taking care of it. Thank you for the inspiration because <sighs> I needed it. So just want to close out asking you all, hey guys, uh, so what do you think about this? This is what I want to close out my videos with, just asking you all random questions that come up to my head because I need someone to talk about these things with. I've been thinking a lot about the random little things that I thought used to signify wealth when I was a child. And I would love to hear what you all thought was just like the epitome of like a put together house. Like you have your life together if you have this thing in your house. For me, I cannot explain why, but it is blue toilet water. You know, those things you drop into your toilet and then you flush it and the, the thing keeps it blue. I don't know why I thought this was like the signal of you are the richest person I know in my life. I can't even tell you where I first saw it, but when I moved into this apartment, I looked at my husband and said, we're getting this because I want blue toilet water because I felt like I had my life together. It makes no sense. It really doesn't. Another one that I think like for whatever reason in my head signifies like you're, you're getting your shit together. is having like multiple switches to the same lights, like in different parts of the room or different parts of the house. Can't explain why. Just think that that was really fucking cool. You know, I thought it was a cool thing can't explain it. It's stupid. I know it's stupid. Little me thought that was it. You know, that was it. So thank you so much for joining me. If you are interested in seeing more of my content, go ahead and subscribe. I am going to try to post regularly, but um, if you know me, you know that I forget almost everything. So we'll see how that goes. Thank you so much for joining me and I will catch you next time. Bye.